Hello, everybody. This is Amphra with the Yams Talk Show. I am here today with my beautiful guest, Mrs. Stephanie Hamlet. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Uh, we're going to give people the opportunity to sign on. It's about oh, five minutes or, or 5.56. So I'm going to play my theme song, uh, my Yams theme song. If there's some type of little bug flying through here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play my theme song until we... Um, to six o'clock until people sign on here. So let me find my theme song. I've been jamming to it all day. Um, let's see. It is called Moose. Turn the music up a little bit here. And we'll give people a chance to sign on. everybody for joining so far thank you so much hi Victor hi Cynthia <laughs> hi Barbara Johnson uh, do you know this person Ch Chatoria Chad hi yes. hey Chad uh, that's uh, my niece that's your niece uh, yeah, that's Fred's niece but that's okay. my yeah, niece, that's niece too. Hi. thank you guys for joining this is Amphra with the Yams talk show today is August the 12th 
and I have my beautiful, beautiful sister here today. Her name is Stephanie Hamlet. She uh, agreed to come on the talk show. I met her through one of my other guests, Shaquita Ford. Um, Stephanie is a recent uh, heart transplant patient. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I know one other black sister who has had a heart transplant in the last five or ten years. Um, I couldn't get her to come on, and then I was wow. like, yeah, well, she's See just she's going works? through some things. Yes, and she still may come on too. But thank you for joining us. This is a survivor. This is what survival <laughs> and the will to live yes. looks like. Yes. <laughs> Don't it look beautiful? It looks beautiful. Let's it looks beautiful. Good on you, girl. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the Yams Talk Show. Thank you so much. We're talking today about a couple of things. Um, she is a person who, who, like I said, is the picture of health, it looks like. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> which shows the will to, to live actually. So we're going to talk about her journey of how she became a heart transplant recipient, about the uh, person whose heart I she received. See. I did bring, um, you got the brought the Okay, good. Yeah, I have to in my that's so okay. Uh, we're going to talk about she's also right now currently going through metastatic breast cancer, and you've had. The breast or um, one breast, one my breast, left breast removed. removed. Mm -hmm. And yes. we're going to talk about, so her husband's going to come on uh, towards the end of the show. We're going to talk about marriage, uh, their marriage in particular, and how uh, the part of the vows that we take when we get married that say in sickness, in health, yes. <laughs> that yes. most people don't even consider that and how serious uh, that part of the vow really is that when you marry somebody, you take a vow to take care of them, to be supportive of them in sickness and health. Definitely. <laughs> I never thought that, you know, you say those vows, yes. but it doesn't really hit It doesn't you. resonate. It doesn't resonate. Yeah, that, that and so uh, her, her beautiful husband is here also. We're going to talk to him because she could not do this alone. <laughs> and uh, and how it has been the journey of marriage and the um, situation that you guys are in right now the part that's in sickness mm. it's easy to stand by somebody when they are healthy <laughs> mm. uh, but when they are sick uh, and a lot of other things too so welcome to the show thank you I'm very <laughs> welcome. excited and welcome to be here we have a lot of people who have signed on so far I want to say hi because this is kind of how we do things. Okay. I love the fact that we are interactive. Uh, Beverly Harper says, hello, Miss Stephanie. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> how are you? Pr Pr Priscilla Clark is waving. Tracy hi. Dent is waving. And Bridget Blessed Brown has hi, joined. Bridget. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. So you are a heart transplant mm -hmm. recipient. And no matter what we are, we need our heart. Definitely. We need a heart to live. Definitely. We need everything about our bodies necessarily, but the heart, heart. is the central organ yes, that keeps us alive. Core. Yes, it <laughs> is. So how did it come to be, Stephanie, that um, you that you uh, became a heart transplant patient? Um, what had happened um, mm -hmm. when I was around because thirty? Because when I was around thirty-one. Thirty-one. Okay. Um, I um, ended up really sick. Okay. Um, didn't know what it was. Thought it was the flu. You know, yeah. it was really, really bad. But I had, I had a cold. Had a cold week and I was like, Oh God, I got the flu. So yeah. I actually went to my regular physician. Okay. Your primary, primary care primary physician. Primary care physician. Uh -huh. And when I went, she told me that it was more than that. Okay. Um, she showed me my X-ray pictures and she said that I was having some issues with my heart. It okay. was larger than what it should have been. So you had an enlarged, an enlarged heart, heart at okay. that time. So at thirty-one years old. Okay. Okay. So she uh, made me an appointment with okay. a cardiologist, Okay. Um, but I did not make it to that appointment. What had happened is I got even sick. more sick, Okay. Um, and I ended up in You had hospital. no prior health no issues? No prior health issues. I was wow. healthy. I never smoked or anything like yeah. that. So it just hit at once. Huh. And no heart no conditions heart like condition. that in your I was family? a cheerleader doing everything. So wow. You really couldn't tell me I was fine. Wow. Um, so were you sweating and couldn't sleep at night or had heart I palpitations? Had heart palpitations. Uh -huh. um, at that point, I was living where I was. We had upstairs, so I could not even go upstairs and climb the steps, steps without okay. being out, out of breath. breath. Okay. So um, what had happened? I was at my son Malik's um, 
preschool graduation. Okay. And I knew I wasn't feeling well, but I was determined to see him graduate okay. from preschool. Then so I you was were weak? A, I was very weak. Okay. Very, very weak. Okay. Um, but I ended up in the hospital. Okay. And when I woke up, I found out that... Were you rushed to the hospital? I was rushed to the from, hospital. From the from event? From the event. Okay. From your son's from graduation? From son's graduation. Okay. <laughs> so I really regret doing that. I'm sorry, Malik, if you're watching. <laughs> I'm <laughs> okay. sorry. He's not sorry because you're here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what it ended up happening when I woke up um, and I was in the hospital, they came in, they talked to me. Okay. They told me, you know, what had happened and they told me you that my heart, or something I at, at It was the... over. Okay. Um, I had a mild heart attack. Okay. Um, my ejection fraction, the ejection fraction, ejection fraction, fraction mm -hmm. which means what? Which means how well your heart is pumping. Okay. Found out that my ejection fraction was so low, it was like, I want to say like a 13. So your Where heart wasn't pumping, wasn't pumping enough, enough blood, blood into it your was blood barely, It was okay. like okay. barely pumping. Okay. Um, wow. So he was, they were really surprised that I had even made it that long. Wow. And all I could think of, even at that time, was because of Jesus <laughs> that I made it that far. Okay. So with that being said, they started me on medication. Okay. Uh, the medication worked fine for an many oral years, medication, oral medication, pills, pills and okay. all of that. And it worked fine for many years. Okay. Um, you had to go back periodically, go back periodically okay. to get checked and okay. everything. They'll make sure the medications were doing good. But okay. over time, you know, with anything, yes. when you take it long enough, your yes. body just gets yes. resistant yes, to it. Yes, it does. Uh -huh. um, and what had happened after that, um, I went to my cardiologist mm -hmm. and he was like, we need to get you on the transplant list. And I was, wow. at that point, I'm like, I'm a transplant list. list. I'm like, wait a minute. And so he explained What year me, was this? This had to be maybe around, see, this is maybe about eight years ago. Okay. About eight years okay. ago. Okay. So um, to get on the transplant list, you have to go through a lot of tests. Yes, you do. So I went, got tested, and I was not, I wasn't bad enough to be on transplant list. I was a little bit too well yeah, okay. to get on it at that time. So okay. we kept trying with medication. And then, Were you able to work during I, this, this time? Uh, I was able to work during this time. Okay. So you didn't have to go out on disability no. once you were diagnosed? No. Once okay. I was diagnosed, I didn't have to. Uh, thank God. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. So, so you were able to have like, maintain a daily lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You were not hospitalized no, none and of all that. of that. You just knew that you had an enlarged heart. Mm -hmm. And it was barely pumping. It was barely pumping. Now, as far as how you were feeling these days, and I, I'm slowing mm -hmm. it down just a little bit so mm -hmm. we can get a clear understanding. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> your day-to-day -day life prior to being put on the heart transplant list, mm -hmm. you still were able to function? Yes. I was okay. still able to function. You knew what was going on. Well, how are you feeling when your heart is not pumping and as well as, well as, as, and as to, when you feel it like that, mm -hmm. you have to know when to slow down. Slow down, okay. So if I so your energy tired, level has to be, it, it, yes. it went down a little bit, okay. but I'm so hard-headed and such a fighter, <laughs> I was like, mm-mm, we're -mm. <laughs> going to keep going. Yeah. And, and how old were your children? At that point, my children were maybe around seven. Okay. And my younger, old, younger, younger. Yeah, yeah, and my oldest one. Um, I think he had to be maybe about 10 or 11 at okay, this time. Okay, wow. So they definitely need their mom. Yes. Look at the love, you guys. <laughs> yes. they, need, they needed their mom. Yeah. Um, and believe it or not, they didn't even know what was going on yeah. with me. You could, how do you explain to uh, your young children that uh, your heart is uh, not pro working properly or... Well, you know, when I finally decided to tell them why mommy was going to the doctor yeah. all the time. Okay. Um, my oldest son, um, he the only thing he said, he said, Well, mom, can I give you my heart? And oh, I had wow. to stop him and say, Think about what you're saying. Same. Yeah. I said, Do you understand that in order for me to get someone's heart, someone has, has to die? die? And so my youngest one wow. was, he was like, he didn't understand yeah. at the time. Yeah. So all I could do only have one, one heart. So we, we yeah. you know, I yes. tried to explain to him yeah. the best way I can. But believe yeah. it or not, I took him to a doctor's appointment with me. Good. And I had already previously talked to my cardiologist because yes. I said, maybe you can help me explain, yeah, explain this, this to my children. children. Yeah. So they went with me and they laughed. And, you know, he made it really fun and educational. Yes. For yes. And then they understood. Yes. I know. think that's a great thing to do with anything. Education. 
uh, never fails. People deal with things better when they have an understanding of what they're dealing with. You know, yes. no matter how young they are, they may not get the full gist, a gist of everything, but it's more than just mama don't feel good. good. Yes. <laughs> and but you know. believe it or not, it made once they here they really yeah. stepped up. Um, when I tell you they would keep the house clean, they yes. were like, well, mommy, we got it. And yes. I had to tell them, Look, they took I on responsibility. They, they had to take care of mama. Yeah, I they love did. That. They yes. did. My boys did. Yes. I, they did. They stepped up completely. Okay. And so, uh, and so you were able to manage day to day. Uh, taking medications. Mm -hmm. Was it a lot of medication you had to take daily? At that point, I was on like maybe about five different medications. Okay. And I cannot for the life of me remember all of them. All oral medications. Okay. Okay. Medication okay. Point. We're going to read some comments here because okay. I love to include, include uh, of the course. <laughs> Um Let's see who's joined. Ernestine Howard has joined. Thank you. Hey, Ernestine. <laughs> Dolores Harris. Demetrius hey. Jordan, you know them. <laughs> Phyllis Pinkford Mason from, uh, she's one of my guests that was on last year from Indianapolis. Dennis Taylor, hi. Nicole Martin, Donna Curry, thank you. Sandra Maven, hi, Sandra. She says, Amphra, I'm so proud of you. I just finished listening to last week, week's show. Now I'm tuning into this show. Love you, girl. Let's keep JoJo Smith in our prayers. Yes, our classmate. Yes. Hi, Donna. She says, hi. Uh, Hi. LaFrancine Weary, she's one of my number one supporters. Thank you, Francine. <laughs> uh, Phyllis says, Hi. Sheila Redford Allen says, has joined. Peggy Riley. Hi, Peggy. Uh, Nakia Moxley, you know. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Nakia. <laughs> she Hi, says, Hello. Shania King says, My TT. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, Shania. TT, love you, baby. Yeah. Uh, Sheila Redford says, Hi. And Nakia Moxley says, from Buffalo, New York. York. Hi. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Kia. Nakia, please share this. You guys, everybody, please share this video because her daughter is also a heart patient. She's in the hospital now. Really? So I will ask everyone to please keep, keep her, her daughter prayer. in prayer. What's her daughter's name? Um, Shalia. Shalia, how old is she? Ooh. Nakia, she knows she's. How is your daughter, Nakia? Your daughter, Nakia? Tell us that. Your daughter's yeah. ill too with heart troubles. So we yes. can uh, pray she's for her. She's been in the hospital, I think, now for four months. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, and we'll continue the conversation. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is Amphra, and we are talking today to Stephanie Hamlet. She is a current uh, heart transplant patient survivor, and she's also currently going through metastatic breast cancer treatments. It's Shakia. Um, uh, Shakia is okay, 25. Shakia. We're going to keep her lifted up in prayers, Nakia. Um, so then you went through this about how long before you actually – Got on the yeah, list on the and got a heart. Um, I went through this probably for about four more years. You didn't have any bypass surgeries None or any of that, that None prior of that. to having the mm -hmm. transplant? Well, the only thing that I had prior to having the transplant is that I got um, other things. Um, I ended up with an ICD, you Which know, is? But, um, is um, what you call what they, they, um, they shock your heart. Wow! <laughs> you go, okay. it yeah. shocks you. It makes your heart slow like down. Like a defibrillator. That's okay. what we yeah. call it. ICD. Okay. Because, but we know it is. Yeah. It's a defibrillator. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I couldn't even <laughs> think of. Okay. What do we call it? Okay. Um. So I. So they had to do that a several times. Okay. Yeah. They put a defibrillator. Were in. you able to sleep at night? Were they concerned with your sleeping and your heart going out while you? That's were why I got the defibrillator. Okay. Okay. Um. Just in case something happened, yeah. it would shock it back. Yeah. Um. And everything, and it was fine. The defibrillator worked great. Cause okay. You all, when that defibrillator goes off. You so know. you hooked up to it at nighttime while you sleep? No, it's, it was uh, surgically implanted. Planted. Oh, okay. That's okay. Implanted. So I'm thinking about the thing that they shot you. Well, it's like that. That's what they still call it. A, it's, it's an it's internal. Oh, gotcha. I got you. I got you. So okay. um, it, what it does is if your heart goes out of rhythm, okay. uh, goes too fast or slows down, it shocks it back okay. into rhythm and everything. So Thank I God for medicine. Yes. And doctors. And doctors. Yes. Um, <laughs> after I got the defibrillator, and everything, my heart was getting worse. I ended up with a mitral valve regurgitation, yeah. which was which. What that means is that your heart is constantly regurgitating back. The blood is regurgitating yeah. back. I had a mitral valve problem. Okay. Instead of my mitral valve working like up and down, it was not opening okay. and closing properly. Okay. So that means that my heart was getting extremely worse. Wow. Um. And your family. You have no family history of heart trouble on your mom or dad's side? I actually do. Okay. I actually do. Did you know that at the side. time? I did. Okay. 
I did. So, um, but I, you know, <laughs> us, we, I go, I went to the doctor. I promise you all regularly. Yes. Um, I do not play with my health. Yeah. So thank God that I do, I did do that. Okay. Because it could not have been caught yes. in time. Yes, because you so, that that prevention and going going uh, through. Because uh, if you had waited, just say you want a person to regularly got a checkup Check or up. whatever you. I might not be sitting here today. Yeah, because sometimes when we get a cold or flu, we don't go. We yeah. just self-medicate. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, I, I hate going to the doctor myself. I'm not going to lie to you. I'd be like, really, doctor? But, uh, I, understand. I, understand. but I do understand that uh, it is necessary. Yes, it, it is. It is very necessary. So your heart uh -huh. didn't improve with the it medications and things that they gave you. So what ended up happening is that um, with the defibrillator, my cardiologist referred me again for a transplant. Okay. And this time, I got on the heart transplant yes. immediately. Immediately. Um, and I was so happy to get that call. Okay. And she was like, hey, congratulations. Wow. You, um, you are now on the transplant list. They so it's a off. national or a national. global or national mm -hmm. uh, heart, transplant heart transplant list? list. Okay. So once they put you on, okay. um, depending on where you are, um, they they have stages, stats. Okay. So my stage was the lowest one, which was seven. Okay. Meaning that she needs one, but she can wait a little while. Okay. You know. so, and so, the, and the donors have to be certain blood types and things that mm -hmm. match has you. To match. match you. I mean, they the blood type has to match. Um, the heart size has to, has wow. to match. The weight has to wow. match. It's so many. Does the ethnicity factors. have to match? The does, does not it matter. Match. It can be a boy, girl, yeah. black, white. The age doesn't have to. None, none of that. Okay. It doesn't matter. But the matter. person who donates has to be an organ donor. An organ donor. Okay. Um, and that's one of the things they I want can't. To talk they're about. not supposed. They, they, they don't do that unless they're signed on to be an organ donor or their parents or okay. whoever is in charge. You know, okay. says yes, it's okay. 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 Because we we. Some people, I have signed my license, you know. Thank you. Thank <laughs> when you. I got my license at 18, I, I, that's been almost 40 years ago, I, you know, because I was like, if you can pick me apart and save somebody, <laughs> do that. Do that. You, you know what I mean? Um, and it's important. We don't understand how important that is. And it's a personal decision. So you can't yes. really, uh, uh, it's something that you have to make a decision about yourself and let your family know. Yes, uh, you know that, it's that's very important to, to let your, your family, family know, know that you are you are an organ donor. I uh, got some more people joining us right now. We got Sherry uh, Beauregard. Hey, Sherry, how <laughs> you doing? <laughs> Looking good, ladies. She says, "Thank you, sweetheart. Thanks, Sherry." Margaret Thompson Pryor has joined. She's been one of my supporters too. Thank you, Margaret. Nakia says, "Dr. Craig is the best." <laughs> yes, he, he is the, the best. He's the heart. Doctor, that's what Nakia's um, daughter's, daughter's heart that doctor. did the surgery on her mitral valve okay. while she was here. Oh, why she came to Michigan? She came, and I just okay. so happened to have Dr. Craig as my surgeon okay. who did my transplant. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, we got he Dr. Is Craig. The best. Dr. Craig is the <laughs> best. <laughs> uh, Bobby Wilson has joined, and my friend Flo says, "You have motivated me to stop putting off transferring my mammogram." Records over and setting my appointment. Oh, <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> Thank you. It's Thank so important. You. When we get to that, sweetheart, yeah. I'm telling you. Yes. Oh, my God. Uh, and what's up? Shatoria? Hey, chat. chat. You call it chat. <laughs> <laughs> signed up. She said she's recently signed up to be she an is. organ donor. Thank you, sweetheart. You know your auntie love you for that. <laughs> it's important. Uh, because, you know, if you meet an unfortunate event in your life and your life is taken mm -hmm. from you, and you are able to donate uh, your organs, whatever they may be. I think you can even choose what organs you want to donate, I believe. Um, actually, or not. no. You can't, okay. You just sign you a card, sign so a whatever. Card. Or, yeah. yeah, so whatever that's healthy enough and they yes. can use, they use it. You all, they, they eyes, eyes, all of their skin, skin yes. all of that. Because, you know, well, I'm, and I'm going to be cremated, which is a whole other show I'm going to be talking about. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, before you burn me up, do this. If I can help somebody, because I, I want to help people while I'm living, right? Mm -hmm. That's my whole goal, to, me, to help make the world a better place. So I want to do that while I'm living and breathing. But when I'm gone, if I can still help somebody right. else to live... Yeah. And that's a wonderful <laughs> that's, that's That's extending my life even more, right. you know, and my legacy and the whole purpose of why I'm here. I agree. You know? I, I totally so agree. So I, I, I'm an organ donor, definitely. I just can't take none while I'm living, though. No, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but um, 
just to put a little humor in there. But so how long was your wait before you actually once I got on the list, I think What year was this around twenty? It was twenty fifteen. Okay, three years ago. Yes, three years. Wow. Um actually when they put me on the list, um they had gave me I had to wear this ongoing medication that was um an IV. An IV. Like a portable, portable IV. Portable IV. Okay. Um, that they tried Milrinol. It's called okay. Milrinol. Mil Milrinol. Milrinol. Okay. And what it does, he wanted to put me on Milrinol. Okay. To try to get my heart more regulated, to give me more time. Okay. Well, the Milrinol was not working. Okay. So I got the phone call, and this was like in. And they tell you to be prepared at be all times. Oh, yeah, Twenty-four hours a day. Be prepared in case you, you get never that know. Call. Yeah. So, um, so you have to stay in, list. you can't go out of town. Yeah, you can go out, out of town, town. Okay. and just let them know, hey, I'm going Where out going? of town, okay. and, you know, and all of that. Okay. So um, he moved me. When I got on the mill renome, I went from um, seven to a two. Your heart on the, rate. On the, your heart. On the, on the, um, oh, on the list. list. Okay, I okay. moved up to a two. Okay. So when he left me on the mill renome, maybe about a week and a half, but okay. he wasn't doing well. Okay. Um, what he wanted it to do. Okay. So Dr. Edwards, um, he wanted to put me in the hospital. And I, once I got off of that, I did not answer your question. Okay. I was on the list before I got my heart, maybe like four months. Okay. Before That's I got my long. heart. Mm -hmm. No, that was some people on that some for, a people for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um so did you how did you cope with the with the you talked about this just a minute ago. How did you cope with the knowledge that somebody was going to have to die in Ooh. order for you to live? That has to be a uh, predicament to be in because you're not wishing no, no one to, to die, die. <laughs> no no i wasn't um no. to know that someone in order for me to live someone had to die yeah it That's was heavy. it was it weighed heavy on my heart yes. i had to do a lot of prayer yes and know that you know i wonder things like i have with that person's family feel yes uh, what so if much they to wanted consider. to meet me, how yes. would I feel? Would I be okay yes. with it? So it was so many different emotions. Yes. But um, with the strength of God, um, I dealt with it and yes. I got my answer and he said that yeah. he wanted me to live and it would be okay. Yes. Because um, there's a part of it, it that is selfless mm -hmm. and selfish mm -hmm. at the same at the time. Same time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It you is. don't want anybody to die. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But 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 you also understand that you're not responsible for how someone else dies in order that you may get their organs so that you can yeah. live. So it has to be something within yourself, a peace, yes. you will. <laughs> yes. A peace that says it's out of my hands. God, let your will be, be done. done. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Let your will be, be done. done. Um, so I thank you. Ooh, and so you got that call four months later. Yeah, four. Uh, well, actually, four months. You know, later he said that he wanted to put me in the hospital. This okay. was like in November. Okay. And he told me because we need to move you up to status one A. Wow. He told me in order to be in status one A, I had to be living in the hospital. Wow. And I was like, okay. And so he said that I asked him because it was right in there. Um, Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I Thanksgiving said, well, Thanksgiving 2015. 2015. Okay. And I asked him. I said, can I please? Wait till after Thanksgiving, yeah. and then you can have your way with me. Yeah. I'll do whatever you, you want ask to get me through to the holidays. I just want to spend with your family get to, to prepare them. For but did this. you ever feel? And you, you know, if I ask, I ask questions. No, that's fine. Um, did I'm you an ever open feel? Book. <laughs> did you ever feel? Did you get depressed? I did. Yes, I can understand that. That's understandable. I did. Did you ever feel death at your door? I did. I did. There were some scary moments yes. that I, all I would do before I went to bed is just, Lord, please wake me up. Yes. The next morning, I did have you too get, much to do. Did you uh, start to get um, your business affairs in order? order? Yes, I did. Your will and who I will take care of your kids. Do this. And, yes. You know, because it is something while we are in health, mm -hmm. we need to do. To do. Uh, but we definitely need to do it when we are faced with, with it. death in our in our right here at right our, here door, at our door. Hey, <laughs> I might be here. You know, it is something that is going to happen to all of us. Mm -hmm. We don't know when or how or why or the time. The time, exactly. And so we really should take that serious while we are living and in good health, 
so that we can make sound decisions Decisions. about uh, what we want in our last days, however that may be, so that people won't be fighting and family won't fall out and, you know, all the things that go on when someone dies. dies. Uh, Because dying is a part of living. Mm -hmm. They are Siamese twins. You can't have one without the without other. The other. <laughs> I agree. I agree. You, you, can't. you can't have one without the other. And so it is something that we all need to do while we are in good health, while we are in sound mind. We need to uh, have conversations with our family, with mm-hmm. our children, and we need to do a will and, and get our affairs in order just while we're living. While we're living. And, while you're and because we're living. Yeah, don't, don't <laughs> wait until you sleep yeah. and then you're not a yeah. frail mind and body. Please. Yeah. And so have conversations with your children and your family about what you would like. And, 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 and I'm going to be having some shows about this soon here. I want to read some more com- comments here. We Believe it or not, we're approaching 630 here almost. Wow. <laughs> that fast. Um, Let's see, Cynthia Freeman Vaughn, she's one of my number one supporters too. Thank you, Cynthia, I love you. Yolanda Elliott says hello. Hi, Yolanda. <laughs> she, she also says, you, woman, you women are awesome. Thank you, Thank Yolanda. Thank you, Yolanda. <laughs> Beverly Harper says, praise God, amen. Won't he do it? Yes, he yes, will. He will. <laughs> and Shatoria says, look at God, less than 30 days in a hospital after surgery, praise God. Yes. yes. Thank you. And Bridget Bless Brown says, Stephanie is a living testimony. Yes, she thank is. Thank you, Bridget. Yes, she is. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for joining. Please, please, all I'm asking every week is to share the video on your page. Help me to reach more people. I'm in the process of uh, getting a talk show, getting a venue to have a talk show here in Memphis. Wow. It's going to be like Oprah here in Memphis. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, have a live talk show, have live audience Monday through Friday is what I'm planning. And I need your help. Uh, I'm only asking you right now to share the video and tell people about yes, it. please share. Uh, and when we go live and I have an audience, it's going to cost maybe $20, $25 to participate, to be a part of the live audience every day. And we can put Memphis on the map. <laughs> we are doing that right now, actually. All things are possible. Yes. And I'm telling you what God told me. <laughs> oh, well, there telling it is you what God right told there. me. <laughs> there it is. And so you guys are witnessing something today uh, as you watch the talk show each week. I'm just being obedient and watching God work things out, truthfully. Uh, because the You Are My Sister talk show, it's not about me. It's about us. And it's about all of us helping to make the world a better place. So I'm asking you to help me to make the world a better place. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. And so Stephanie, um, you got the call. Mm-hmm. Where were you when you I got the call? I was in the hospital. You were already hospitalized because they wanted you to be mm-hmm. in the hospital. Um, I was actually right. in the hospital for, I think, maybe about three weeks. Okay. Um, and so I got the call from Daniel. Okay. Um, the nurse came in and she was like, And Daniel. the call said what? He said, hey, Stephanie. And I was like, <laughs> Hey, Daniel, uh-huh. we got a heart for you. Wow. And I went through this before while I was in the hospital. Okay. That they'll let you know they got one, but then something's Something wrong. Can, yeah. Well, we can't use that. Dr. Yeah. Edwards is not, you know, but I, and my reaction was, for real this time. So you had gotten several calls prior yeah, while to I was in the okay. hospital. Okay. And he said, no, 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 no. You're not understanding. It's a near perfect match. Wow. It's healthy. This part is so near perfect. It could have been <laughs> your sibling. Wow. It could, and I was, and I just cried. Wow. And the nurse, she was like, she already knew she was crying <laughs> with me. <laughs> and she was, she, you know, so it was just, it was a celebration. Yes. It really was. And it was on Christmas Eve of Christmas 2015. Christmas Eve of 2015. Wow. Yes. So they were actually going to do the surgery that night. So, you know, I called. um, So they have to take your heart out. Mm -hmm. While you are still, they still have you alive on life support. support. (laughs) Yes. I'm just trying to walk through the steps and not cry, (laughs) y'all. Yes. They take. They have to take your heart out. And they don't take your heart out until uh, everything has been approved approved. that you are. This yes, heart is everything good for you. has to be approved. The heart has to be there. Okay. It has to be checked to make sure everything okay. is okay again. Okay, yeah. Um, and everything. So and you don't know the history of who the donor is no. at this point. The only thing they told me is that my donor was nineteen. 
19 years old. I didn't know if it was male or female. Okay. They just told me that that's the only thing that they're allowed to tell you. Okay. So they were going to do the surgery that night, but instead, look how God works. I got my new heart on his birthday. On um, Christmas morning, um, I went in the, 2015 Christmas morning, um, and what a gift. Not, I was not afraid. What a gift! Um, I went in, you know, smiling. My husband was right there with me the whole time. <laughs> yes, and I just was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so you know, fear, no fear, subsided. It did, and, and I, faith. Steps in. Step in. It did. <laughs> I, I thought because I really thought I would be nervous and scared. Yes, but you I don't know what's what, truly you're going into an unknown territory. Yeah, where even the doctors they got so much, so control, much, control. but they don't have, they don't know everything. Exactly. You so know, yeah. They took me on. They let him walk me as far yeah. as you know they could, and yeah. I walked in. And at the time, the anesthesiologist was giving me, you know, medicine. Yeah. And they're talking to me. So the only thing I can remember, you guys, is being put on the cold table. <laughs> and I don't know what else happened after that. <laughs> when, um, so, but, and when mean, you woke when up? I woke up, I thought it was actually the next day. Okay. But it was like two days later. Wow. <laughs> um, and everything. So when I finally woke up, um, believe it or not, a lot of things that I learned once I woke up that they told me that happened to me was not really the norm of what they do. Really? It's not, it was not the norm. I found out that the trait that they have mm -hmm. in you, it was taken out like the next day. Really? Normally this, um, as far as um, blood loss, yeah. I only had like this much. They took all of that off of me. Wow. And that was so fast. Yes. Everything was healing Quicker. so quick. He was like, this girl. <laughs> so, um, but when I woke up, Believe how God works. Mm -hmm. When I opened up my eyes, you are mm -hmm. the first person I saw coming through the door was my husband. Wow, beautiful. It was so, I, and I thought it was the next day. They had to tell two me. days later. No, today is not Saturday. <laughs> today is Monday. <laughs> so, but um, so let me ask you this, because you know I've had a minor surgery compared okay. to yours, um, and I always go back and ask myself. Where was I <laughs> in between? between? Because I say that in the sense that you're not dead. No. And technically, you're not alive either. Yeah, to some degree. Technically. Mm -hmm. You are in a state where you're not dreaming. dreaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have no consciousness. None. <laughs> <laughs> None at all. At all. And, you, and even when you go to sleep, you dream. Mm -hmm. Your spirit is still active. Mm-hmm. So it is a place that I call, and I have a book that I need to finish, oh. called You Are in a Place That I Call the Shadow of Death. Oh, wow. Where uh, it can go either way. That is true. It could have <laughs> went either way. Uh, and you don't have any remembrance. You don't know that you're alive. You don't know if you're dead. You, you are in a state of nothingness in a sense you that know what i'm true. saying because they put you under, under your so life deep. is in that yeah. anesthesiologist yeah. hands yes. more than it is the surgeon because he is the one who has put you in such a deep 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 sleep yes so I, I don't know <laughs> what happened <laughs> and you have to relinquish uh your faith at that point to god and says okay if i wake up on this side it was meant to, meant be. to be. And if I don't, family, you know. Yes, I agree. <laughs> you know, uh, and so uh, that is a place where um, when you wake up out of it, you have to know that there was a greater power in that room. It was. <laughs> it was. A greater power. Especially for the heart to be that perfect. Yes. That's not, that's just rare. You know, yes. you get a match and everything, but. It may be a little something needs to be tweaked with her. Anyway. Yeah. This could have been So are you heart. on like a lifetime medication, what they call a... Um, yes. Yeah. I'm on anti-rejection Yes, yes, so, yeah. Um, yes, but I have to take every day. It's called um, Program. Program. Okay. That, um, I have to take um, every day. And thank God that it, my heart is doing so well. I'm on such a low dosage. Wow. It's so what was your low. recovery like? Did you have to go to like a rehab? Um, I or? did. I had to go to cardiac rehab. Okay. And I went through that. You're supposed wow. to go, I think, three months. Cardiac ago. rehab. Cardiac rehab. Okay. And trust me, I needed it because, yes. believe it or not, after you get one, it's, you can't even hardly walk. 
Yeah. It's like, okay, I thought I was super Because they cut your cut, your chest yeah, the chest open. cut all open. the way open. I don't yes. know if you all can see, I have this big scar. Yeah. <laughs> just here. But Dr. Craig is wonderful, you all. He also does cosmetic work, too. <laughs> so he did it where it's, you yeah. barely can see yes. it. So, um, but, yeah, but um, you have to go through cardiac rehab. Okay. But I only did, like, maybe a month of it. Okay. And I was doing well. well. I was breathing better. I was walking better. You um, feel better? I felt better. And he was like, you don't need cardiac rehab. <laughs> and, like, okay, well. and so, you know, he was like, you're just moving. But even before they um, got me uh -huh. out of the hospital, after my heart transplant, I was out of the hospital in two weeks. Wow. I was walking, doing everything. And I remember when they come and get you, they have to, you know, walk you so you can. And my doctor and my physicians were right there at yeah. the nurse's station. Yeah. And they saw me and I was like, look, I'm walking fast. I'm walking fast. <laughs> and so they was like, what are we going to do, do with it. you? And I was like, I'm getting out of here. And you have a strong part of surviving anything that affects you is the will, the inner will that you summon. Because you don't know you have it until you are you in that predicament. But the inner will to live is greater than the uh, life-threatening things that you face. I agree. You know? I when agree. you can summon that will to get over, to climb up, climb up. to get out, yes. <laughs> or to live, it is a will that you don't, uh, I think I've read this quote, you don't know how strong you are until you have no other choice, choice but to be strong. I That's when you can summon the greatest spirit of who you are. That is so true. <laughs> that is so true. Words to live by. You, you know what I'm saying? And so it's easy to say, oh, I could have, would have, should I, ain't going to do that. But until you are in that moment, you really don't know your own strength. I agree. You, you know? really don't because I never how bad thought you I was going to be this strong. Yes. Because me, when I go to the doctor to give blood, I'm about to faint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to look at that. What in the world? Uh, and that's why my profession was not caregiving. No. I, 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 <laughs> if you can't stand that, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a caregiver. But if I have to be, you understand? Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't going to volunteer for it. But if, if I have to, to then, then that's when the will to, to do it will come. But I'm not good at medicine. or I, It's hard for me to take my own medicine. Every day. I'm like, oh, my God, I went two days. I'm taking my medicine. Jeez. <laughs> but... Your, your strength comes when you need it okay. and your faith increases when you need it yes. uh, because when you can conquer fear and the only way to conquer fear is with faith. faith. Yes. <laughs> the only way so to true. conquer, the only the only way way to conquer fear is to increase your faith. And so that's what you've done. Well, thank you. And so then, so at that time, this whole breast cancer thing wow. was not part of your no. diagnosis. No, because you can't get on a, one thing about it, you cannot get on the transplant list if you have any type of disease. Okay, wow. Um, especially the you know life threatening. Yes, diseases. yes. So you can't. So I had no problems with anything because I always went to get my mammogram. Yes. Um, I took good care of myself to the yes. best that I could. Yeah. Um, but what had happened with the breast cancer? We were getting ready to go on vacation, my husband and I, mm -hmm. and I was doing my self exam. Okay. So I felt a knot in my left breast. I okay. Was like, I wonder if my lymph nodes are just swollen. Yeah. I said, well, maybe that's it. So I didn't. I was like, no, I just had my mammogram um, and everything, and nothing was showing up. Mm -hmm. So I checked it again. It was like every time I would take a shower, I'm like, babe, I don't Something. think this is supposed to be Say, like no, this. Yeah. It's, it's, it's gotten bigger. Yeah. So um, believe it or not, I was at work, and one of the nurses um, that works where I was working at before mm -hmm. I had to stop working, um, I told her about it, uh -huh. and we went into there, and I showed her. She was like, yes, yeah, Steph, you need to get that checked out. Yeah, okay. So I called. Um, yeah, I told her, well, we're getting ready to go on vacation. Yeah. When I get back, I'll yeah. let them know. Yeah, <laughs> let me go have some let fun. Let me go have some fun yes. first. Um, so when I got back, I had an appointment. I actually uh -huh. had an appointment with Transplant Clinic. Uh -huh. So I let my transplant coordinator know. Okay. But at this time, they were putting me in the hospital anyway because of some other issues okay. that were happening. So um, he came in. They sent me over. I got my got the mammogram done uh, from while I was in the hospital. Yeah, okay. While you already there. While I was already yeah. there. And so I knew it had to be something. I was like, mm-mm, this is something. Because they wanted to come in. They left out, came back. Dr. Elvis was supposed to do a biopsy, yeah, biopsy of it, yeah. and I was like. So that the, <laughs> the, the, they determined then that mm -hmm. any of the process that you've gone through, the medicines and the treatments with the heart, may have caused your lymph nodes or swelling in your breast? Were they related, related in any way? Um, actually, um, 
when you're a transplant patient mm -hmm. and what you do is your immune system is suppressed. It's suppressed, okay. It's suppressed. So that could have, you know, made yes. me vulnerable yeah. to cancer. Yeah. Um and everything. So they that, that could have been part yeah. of it. But hey, whatever caused it, yeah, that was not my focus. Yes. My focus was on once the diagnosis came, I was at stage three breast cancer. Wow. Um, I did not focus on the diagnosis. I focused on what can we what do. What can we do to heal? What that, that's, that, that's okay, I hear you on that. Yeah. But what do I need to do? Yes. So there were a lot of options that I had, but I chose to have my breast removed yes. and chemo. And by being on my left side, which is where my new heart is, yes, yeah. it was a big concern yes. with transplant. Wow. So we decided chemo. Yeah. Um, and to get the breast removed. Yes. So that's what we did. You are um, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful survivor. Thank you. So we, we did that. And, the symbol um, of and, strength. Oh, you thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, um, strength and my strong. motto is, let your faith be stronger than your fear. Yes. yes. Let, let your faith, faith be stronger, stronger than, than your fear. fear. I live by that. Yes. Let your faith. Let's say that again, y'all. Let your church. faith. <laughs> Do you mean you're stronger, stronger than, than your fear. fear? Yes, you have to. You have to. You have to. I can't. You know, I'm, fear I'm will moving. kill you, but what for a disease will? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Fear is killing us a lot. A fear of success is actually killing a lot of people. Exactly. You know, uh, people exactly. fear being successful. successful. Let's uh, say hi to some more people here. We have a few more minutes, and we're going to ask our husband to come on here shortly. Um, we left off with Sheila uh, Allen said, "What a blessing." And uh, Nakia says, yes, he is wonderful. My friend Warren Williams is waving at us. He was hey, a guest Warren. on. <laughs> and Nakia says, going through what I am with my child, Stephanie, is my strength to keep going. Yes. And Warren says, uh, smiling, I love her spirit. Thank you, Warren. Thank you, Warren. <laughs> Look at the love. Thank Look at you the all love. the love. <laughs> wow. Thank you all so very much. We have a few more minutes here, about 15 more minutes. And if we go over a little bit, that's fine because it's Facebook and I don't have to be so strenuous <laughs> on time. But um, going through two traumatic experiences. <laughs> well, actually, now three. <laughs> What's the third one? Well, you know, the first one was stage three um, breast cancer. Breast cancer, okay. Yeah, so I went into remission. Okay. I was fine from October to February. Of this year? Of this year. Okay. And it came back with a vengeance. Wow. And so now and you now are... Now stage four metastatic breast cancer. And metastatic means what? It means that it spreads it spread throughout your body. body. So um, it came back with a vengeance. Yes. I um, mean, that happens sometimes. Yes, it does. That it does happen sometimes. Um, so when I found out that it came back, uh, it, it, it devastated me. Yes. Uh, I was like, okay, this is three times that I'm fighting for my life. God, what are you trying to tell, tell me? What am I not doing? Yes. I had so many questions. Yes. But I had to know that he has a purpose. Yes. It's not it's happening for nothing. It's a purpose and it's a, a purpose. plan for your life. Exactly. <laughs> and we can't live by our plan. We have to live by God. Yeah. Our plan Submit is to God's straight. Plans. It goes like this. <laughs> but God's plan got valleys and hills <laughs> and stuff so you can really let so they can know that he is real. Yes. He is real. So. A living to Most people's testimony, they don't really get to be the living testimony. <laughs> you learn about it after the fact Thanks. or whatever. And, but we are witnessing, and I've had several guests on that are living testimonies, people that we can know and touch, touch and love and, and, so, and know yes. that they are living testimonies <laughs> Yes, of what the power of God can put on you, can put get you through, get you over, or give you the faith to get through it, you know, yes. and, and to go through go it. Go through it, you know. Yes, because it's not easy. It's not easy every day. And so the, the thing that I want us to take from today's show, audience, is that no matter what you've been through, <laughs> <laughs> you've been blessed. Yes, you have you've been, been blessed. blessed. No matter what you've been through. I agree. I agree. When you look around and you hear somebody else's story, you realize <clears throat> that you've been blessed. I agree. I've been blessed. I've been very blessed. Yes. And you wake blessed. your eyes up in the morning. You've been blessed. Been blessed. Uh, her husband is here. How long have you guys been married? We've um, our anniversary is actually September eighteenth. It would be coming two up. Years. Two years. Two years. Wow. So, when you met him after you had the transplant, or no? We actually met. 
right um, before I started having the issues. We've actually, well, I, I, I can't issues say with heart. my heart. I can't say we met then because we were childhood friends. Okay, okay. So we you've known each other together. Long time. Yes, we grew up together. Okay, okay. Fred, are you ready to come on? Come on up. Won't you sit right back here behind us, bring these chairs up, and uh, kind of get in the middle of us? We have a few more minutes left. And um, <laughs> yeah, we got about 15 more minutes left. Hi, Fred. Welcome to the show. You can pull, you pull this chair up a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Just come up a little bit. This is Fred, her beautiful husband. And the beautiful thing is when you're going through something as traumatic, you do need somebody to literally hold your hand. Yes, you do. You have, and so you've been holding her hand. <laughs> I love that. I got you. <laughs> he says, I got her. <laughs> so the last segment of the show I want to talk about is marriage. Because we all want that fairy tale, that beautiful wedding, that Prince Charming, that princess, that queen or whatever. We've been sold the fairy tale. But when you take that vow to love, honor, obey, if you will, yeah. respect, mm -hmm. it also says in sickness and health. Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. And most of us don't realize the vows that we are taking, how sacred they are, <clears throat> number one. It's just not getting up there saying he's so fine, she's so sexy, yes. yada, yada, yada. yada got some good sex or whatever. <laughs> I agree. It's, um, it's more it is a that. sacred vow <laughs> to continue the family and to take care of each other in sickness and health. <laughs> so when you get married to somebody, you really have to search within yourself before you say I do and ask yourself, am I marrying somebody that I'm willing to take care of in sickness because you can be well the day you say I do you can have perfect health the day you say I do and you can walk out the door and life could change in a heartbeat so if you don't take the vows of marriage seriously and responsibly you're signing up for something that most people don't realize well I didn't sign up for that <laughs> mm, I've heard those. Stories. I've heard people say when that. When I go to chemo, I've heard some stories like that. Uh -huh. Devastate you. Like so, that. how do you guys, as a couple, how has this journey changed you? It, I think that it made us stronger. Closer? Cl very closer. closer. Um, you when, things, you, when you got married, did you, that part of the vow that you ever even considered? No. <laughs> <laughs> because actually we got married um <clears throat> almost a year after I got my transplant. Okay. Um we got married. We, had, we were already so we dated, engaged. engaged already. Okay. I saw the beautiful pictures of Thank the wedding. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um so and believe it or not, my wonderful husband, when I got put in the hospital for my heart transplant, uh -huh. because I didn't know how long I was gonna be in there, uh -huh. we didn't know really know what was gonna happen. Yes. He was willing to marry me in that hospital. Hospital, wow. He wanted my to hat be, goes off to you, brother. Willing, he was like, whatever. <laughs> he was like, I just want you to be my wife. Yes. That's love. When you can take care of somebody and you don't know, are you going to have to clean them, clean up after them, have you feed them? <laughs> yes. He's, He's done, done all, all of that. that. That is love. <laughs> love is not this uh, fairy tale Tell. we've been sold. It's not that every day is going to be peaches and cream and life is going to be good. It is about uh, marry someone that can help you on your journey in life. I hadn't found that yet. <laughs> and you I don't even know about God's I, turn. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm not even praying for it, truthfully. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I do know that if I ever do that, I understand that it's not about that, oh, he's so sexy, he's so fine, mm -hmm. she's so this, and she's so that. It is a serious vow uh, about <clears throat> the continuation of the family, mm -hmm. getting someone to help you take care of every aspect of your life. Each, mm -hmm. other. each other, each other, all the debt, all the all the baggage. Because mm -hmm. at this age, we all come, come with, with baggage, you know, with some previous something. history. Uh, and so that is what marriage is about. And I wanted people to see what I feel true love is. It is not what you see on TV. It is not the no, big glamorous wedding and the big fairy tale. What's real about love is about life. 
And life has a journey that has so many peaks and valleys and twists and turns and ups and downs. Yes. And if you don't marry someone that can hold your hand <laughs> yes. and walk with you, you. <laughs> Ooh, how many people really journey. have that? You're right. It's very we don't know rare. what love is in this world anymore. Because that's what love is. Marry like, someone yeah. that can walk with you on your journey yeah. and help each other when one's low. Pick each other up, up, lift each other up, be there when they make uh, bad decisions, decisions, and have forgiveness in the midst. I agree. <laughs> you gotta have forgiveness. And, and you gotta so, be able to communicate. Yes. Have fun. Trust me, it works. <laughs> <laughs> Find the humor. <laughs> Find works. the humor in things. All yes. right, now, let's, let's take some more comments here. Uh, we only have a few more minutes here. We're going to give Fred a moment here. Uh, War Warren says, uh, big ups, brother. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. He says, thank you, Warren. Uh, Sherry Curtis says, that's love. I love me some Fred H. for loving my cousin. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, cousin. And Sheila Allen says, true love is hard to find. Hats off to you and your husband, and may God continue to bless y'all above and abundantly. Thank you, Sheila. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Sheila. Uh, Beverly Harper says, Mr. Hello, Mr. Fred. A man that finds a wife finds a good thing. Praise God for your marriage. That's thank true. you. That is so true. That is the truth. That um, is the truth. Because there are no promises. No, there are not. <laughs> There's no promises for any of us, truthfully, about how our journey uh, is going to unfold as we live it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so to find someone um, and to meet someone that can <clears throat> hold your hand through such a trying time and still be smiling. Yeah, <laughs> he has not missed a beat. <laughs> when I called her, you guys, to uh, I, I was referred to her by uh, Shaquita Ford, my guest that's been on a couple of times, who was going through lymphoma. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when I called her and she says, well, you know, I don't drive. I live in West Memphis, and my husband takes me everywhere. <laughs> I was like, "What do you do that at?" <laughs> yeah, and she, he says, "My husband takes me everywhere. everywhere. I, I drive was, around town." I get you. Just, yeah, I get um. you. And I said, "Okay, yeah, I want to meet him." I was like, "Do we have any brothers?" <laughs> <laughs> he, he takes me everywhere. Anybody in West Memphis, they always know when they see me, and if he's not with me, yes, they're like, "What, well, Fred? We know he's sorry." <laughs> Out, he sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let's see, we have who else says uh, is on here. Um, Arthur Joseph Bliss has joined Sandra Maven says, Well, and for another great show, thank you, Sandra. Wow. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to show you guys uh, because I chose the picture, I went to your website, your okay. Facebook page, <laughs> and chose the picture of you two in white, and I was like, That's it, that's that's the that's what I was wondering I was about to ask you what were you guys taking that picture for because it was so perfect for the show it was like God already said okay this is the picture you're supposed to use okay. and I loved it because as I look through your feed uh, and your, your photos uh, I have a very high keen sense of discernment and I knew you all were in love <laughs> I, I knew that it was no just uh, you know fly by night situation I could tell that you guys equally were in love with each other. Yes, and I get that sitting here with them today. And for me to see black people in love, it's like seeing a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> it's just very rare. It's so rare today uh, to see black people in love and genuinely in love and to know that uh, he could have bailed out if he didn't love you. Yes, you know? and that was one of my Most people would fears. run from that type of responsibility yes. it's responsibility see marriage is a responsibility yes. to each other you know it is yes, a responsibility is. to be there no matter what definitely no matter how you know uh, to love honor and respect each other yes. in the difficulties that 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 you're gonna face because we all face them together I just hope that in my life I never get sick or if I do, God will put someone there that can walk with can me. Walk. <laughs> yes, I'm so grateful. That can know. walk with me. Yes. And, and you don't have to write a song about that. Come walk with me. <laughs> Come, walk with me. <laughs> Come walk with me, somebody. <laughs> um, Fred? Yes, ma'am. 
thank you for being that great man that you are. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of such a beautiful, beautiful soul, a beautiful, beautiful spirit. <laughs> so you guys have been childhood friends? Yes. Childhood friends. I had the biggest crush on him. Oh my gosh. Um, we were younger. Uh -huh. <laughs> we were little. I think I was like maybe about 12 or 13 when I noticed him. Uh -huh. I really noticed yeah. him. Yeah. He was, you know, lifeguard at the swimming pool. Lifeguard. Like looking <laughs> nice. Yeah. Looking nice. He was a little older than me. Yeah. So my yeah. grandfather, you know, I came from the old school where the grandparents. Got to meet him. Exactly. Maybe <laughs> my, grandma, my grandfather was like, mm mm. <laughs> <laughs> So we, you know, that was not our time. Yeah. Um, and everything, but you know, we kind of lost touch as you get yeah, older. Yeah, that's your older. Get more experience. Yes. Believe uh -huh. our families are close. Yeah. My family and his family. So when we um reconnected and everything, um, his brothers and stuff, they everybody was like, "Little Stephanie, <laughs> how did it happen?" My mom was like, "Miss Elizabeth's son." I was like, "Yes, man." She was like. Hey, you know, okay. everybody was, so, but everybody was really excited because our families were so close. close. And so then the other. introduction and getting to know each other, y'all didn't have to do, y'all already knew each other from children. Other so, children. so, and your families knew each other, yes. which made it easier to get to know each other <laughs> as adults. Yeah, because they yeah. had like, yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> they were, I don't know who was happier that we started dating, <laughs> me and him or our families. Yeah. Like, mm. So that's when you know, uh, because, uh, when people marry, you marry a family. Yeah. You don't just marry that one person. That's why marriages are so important because it's about two families mm -hmm. joined together to help walk the journey of life together. I agree. Because <laughs> no that one that is an island. This family. <laughs> <laughs> that is so wonderful. Fred, how has this journey been for you? What has it taught you as a man? Um, you know, it's... it's, it's it's brought me a lot closer to my wife. You yes. Know, uh, you you I, didn't see this coming, did you? No, ma'am. I, I truly I didn't. <laughs> Nobody but, can see this coming. No, ma'am. No. And, you know, but it's, it's here. It's something that we have to, you know, deal with. Deal and, with. Mm -hmm. and I honestly feel in my life, I'm, if I'm going to have to deal with it, I got the best person in the world to deal with. Oh, my God. God knows I have. Like, <laughs> it, 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 it's, okay. It's, okay. okay. <laughs> That's so beautiful. You need to teach some classes and teach men how to do this, you know? And let's teach our young boys how to be responsible men and how what the what the meaning of marriage is. You know what I mean? Yes. What the true, true meaning, meaning of, of marriage, marriage and love and responsibility and the continuation of the family is. Yes. We need men to step up and teach our young boys boys this and mean. we teach our mm. young girls the same thing too because it ain't a red carpet not marriage no <laughs> it's relationship not. It's, not. It's, not. it's not a red carpet it's not the fairy tale it's not romeo and juliet or it's not the kardashians yes. <laughs> exactly. it's real life it's real life uh we're about out of time here we got about one more minute i'm going to just say hi to a few more people who have signed on wow uh, Robin Allen, thank you, Robin. She's a childhood uh, a friend. Uh, Shateria says she's in tears. Oh, <laughs> Beverly Harper says, well, until next Sunday, if the Lord's will, you have a beautiful week. Thank you, Beverly. Uh, Shateria says, Hamlet family is grateful. <laughs> <laughs> she always smiles. And Laverne Morgan says, I love you both. That's, that's my best friend. She was my maid of honor. And wow. she actually... Had, had breast cancer first and she had her left breast removed. Wow. And I told her, look, I'm not trying to be like you, Laverne. <laughs> I love you, Laverne. <laughs> Bridget Brown says, Amphra, I have enjoyed the show. Great show. I will tune in from now on. Thank you, guys. I am asking if you know me, if you like the show, uh, help me to make it an even better show to reach more people, to please share it on mm -hmm. your website, on your Facebook pages every week. Tune in, tell people about it. And if you would like to be a guest on the show, I'm talking to everyone about everything, everything except for entertainment and gossip and, you know, frivolous things. That's not the conversation that we have here. We are trying to make the world a better place. Again, I am working on uh, getting a venue where I can take the show live Monday wow, through Friday. awesome. And have you guys pay $20 or $25 to be a part of the studio audience every day. 
And who knows? <laughs> it's going to happen. Well, I know we need. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I couldn't do this without you guys every week. It's not about me. It's about us and how we can make the world a better place. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys oh, for you're being more here today. Than welcome. I thank really you so enjoyed much. It. Thank you so much. We'll be back next Sunday. I have a guest on. Her name is Wendy O. She is a, a actress and a songstress here in Memphis. She's starring in this play that's coming to the Evergreen Theater on the 24th of mm -hmm. August. It is called If Tomorrow Never Comes. So she's going to be here next week. Next uh, uh, then the week after that, I'm going to have, uh, his name is Mass Achan. He is a musician here in Memphis. Um, he's been an organist, a pianist, and a song, uh, uh, I think he's a choir director. Wow. For I want to say, what's Geo Patterson's church? Uh, um, what is Temple of Deliverance, Temple of I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to have him on the last Sunday. I think it's the 24th, I believe. Uh, so, August is a great, great start to the third season of the Yam yes. Talk Show. Uh -huh. Season three. Season three. Uh -huh. Wow. And I'm enjoying it, and I need your help. All I need, I'm not asking for money. I'm just asking you to tell people about the show, tune in every week, and share it on your pages. That's, that's yeah. easy to do. So, I'm going to leave you guys today with a song. Wow. <laughs> the song is called, Can You Stand the Rain? Because <laughs> that's what marriage, what marriage is. is. Yes, that's what marriage is. Yes. I'm gonna pull this up as we say goodbye here. I'm gonna pull this song up. I thank you guys for joining today. I thought this song would be such a great song it because <laughs> all of us know this. Song. Oh, we know. <laughs> we know that song. It is so true. Can you stand the rain? I'm dedicating this song to you uh -huh. and Fred. Uh -huh. <laughs> It is by boys. I mean, not by boys. New, new edition. Uh, can you stand the rain? Hey. Thank you, guys. Oh, you're so close. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> <this morning. laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Yes. We're gonna listen to the song, y'all. Give me a hug, Fred. <laughs> Thank you. Give me a hug. We're a little shy sometimes. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. This is Amphra. Yes. <laughs> and how about G Productions? Home of the You Are My Sister talk show. Yes. But we don't employ people. <laughs> we empower them. <laughs> I like that. I like that. We're going to listen to the song as it goes out. Thank you again. That's not possible. Hey. Tell me, can you weather the storm? Oh. Because I need somebody to stand by me. Yeah, yeah. The good times and bad times for always. This is to you guys. Everything right there. Sunny days. Everybody loves them. Tell me, baby, can you marry somebody that can stand around? <laughs> yes, I got mine. Yes. Oh. Let's make no for sure. Let's make no for sure. Stand the rain. Well, I got my answer. Yes. <laughs> Shatoria says, see you later. Have a great evening. Thank you, Shatoria. And the bird says, I will be back next week. Please come back. Yes. 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 No, she will. So <laughs> share this on your pages, y'all. Yes. Share, share, share. Look at Bridget got all his heart. Love, love, love. I need that love. Thank you. I love you, too. Whoa, baby. Whoa, baby. Whoa, baby. Whoa, baby. I'm not going to roll. Be right there for me. <laughs> Sunny day. Everybody loves real. Warren says I'm smiling. Oh, wow, that's good. Oh, no. I know, I know. All yeah. the days won't be perfect. Won't be perfect. Can't stand. Stand. What do you do? I'll be fighting. Yes. Yeah. Man, standing press here. Who knew that? I'll do for men standing press here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest, let's see what Stephanie Howard says. Love lasts forever. Yes, yes it does. Because I want you and I need you. 